I'm going to go live here on the YouTube channel and I want to make sure that you guys can all see me. So bear with me here just a second here. I think we are up and running. So if you can hear me, you can't see me yet, but you can probably hear me. You can see that title card. Uh, but give me uh, some shout outs, some highs, some hellos, so I can make sure that we are out and up and running. So, uh, and then we'll get started very shortly. Um, we've got a fun day planned today. Today we're gonna string. It's my very favorite thing. So I can't see anybody chatting yet. So I think uh, if you are on, just give me a hey, just so I can make sure that we are all connected. If you would, if you would, please. And then, uh, and then we'll get started. So let's see. I'm just waiting, just waiting on you. You're probably just waiting on me. So let me see here. Let me just make sure that that's running up and running. Let me, uh, go here. It looks like we are on, but I don't see anyone's chat yet. So uh, bear with me here while I wait for everyone to jump on. I can see that we are live there and I think I can see us live on Facebook. So let's just make sure um, oh, here we go. Let me see. Are we, there we go. That might be the, um, the Facebook issue. Let's make sure that that's up. Okay. Thanks, you guys, for bearing with me. It's always a, um, it's always an adventure, especially on these days. So um, just hang in there. I know the stream will catch up. I see you guys over on Facebook. I can see the stream. Uh, make sure though that I can see you guys over on, um, on the YouTube uh, stream. Oh, there we go. I can see you guys here. Uh, I was just looking at the wrong place for the chat. Sorry about that. So I can see you. Okay, perfect. I think we're all here and the Facebook feed just came up. Sorry about that, you guys, but sometimes uh, it takes a little uh, bit uh, to just catch. So here we are. Alrighty. Well, I am here. You are here. Let me make sure that I am presentable here and here I am in three, two, and one. There we are. Good. One. Thank you so good morning wherever you are around. Um, I think again with so many, um, uh, what do I want to say? With so many streams going on, both on Facebook and on YouTube, I think it takes a little uh, bit of time sometimes to have the feed catch. But we're all set. Looks good. I've got everybody here and we are ready to go. So today is Thursday, April 2nd. We're walking into April, everybody. So that's good. <laughs> and I hope you all are feeling well. We're feeling well. Everybody here is good. Um, still uh, plugging along right here. So we're hanging in there, you know. Um, again, it is coffee. 
not anything else. Um, but I hope that you are also enjoying your morning coffee with me um, or your afternoon or evening uh, beverage of choice. Um, but we're good, you know. Uh, uh, things are falling into a routine. I don't know if you guys are feeling um, a routine yet. Um, and especially I know uh, some of the U.S. yesterday was put into quarantine, uh, which is a good thing. Here in the Bay Area, we've, we're have we on our third week, um, also almost going into our fourth week here. And it's good, you know, we're getting used to things um, and uh, we're hanging in there. So as always, you guys, this will pass. We just have to shelter in place, you know, do our thing. This is our big moment to reach in, do our best. I was talking with my mom yesterday, you know, and I was kind of um, losing it a little bit on the phone. Because, you know, when you talk to your mom, you know, you're like, oh, and I just want to go home. And my mom, she was hilarious. My mom says, buck up, Kate. And I went, oh, okay. <laughs> Good one. Good advice, Ma. So I'm going to send that advice on to you guys. Buck up, everybody. We're going to be okay. So dig deep, we've got it. Um, so uh, let's take a look at what we're gonna be doing today. We've been going back and forth um, between um, uh, our bracelet that is uh, that we were working on yesterday. We take that unsightly piece of string out of there. But the um, the um, wrap bracelet there, which I'm really, really digging, and I'm going to get back to that um, next week, uh, and we'll finish it off with just a little bit of lathering here and closed it, okay? So today we're going to get back to this little charmer right here, which is our... Um, which is our wire centerpiece. A couple of you on the bead table, which is our Facebook group for our bead shop, um, uh, for bead shop fans and followers and stuff, uh, have already completed your wire centerpiece. And you guys, they look great, I will say. They're really uh, good looking. So uh, it's time for you to take that next leap and start to string. I also wanted to say over on the bead table, you guys also have been um, posting some really great stuff. I mean, the sheltering in place has done wonders for our creativity, I think. So um, there's some really beautiful stuff. Um, Michelle, I noticed you, um, uh, just posted this collar thing that you made, not thing, but you know what I mean, this collar that um, you use the the lapis and bronzite um, uh, pieces, that bib collar thing we have. And girl, that thing just blew me out of the water. I don't know if you're watching yet, um, but it is gorge. So if you are um, over on the bead table, take a look at um, Michelle's piece. You'll see it. She just posted it not that long ago, and it totally inspired me. It's a really great way to use those bib pieces, so are those collar pieces. So today, uh, though, we're going to get to this thing, and I, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm still digging it. I love it. Um, it's going to be, I think, um, a uh, necklace that's not going to be super long. I think it's going to hang kind of like right here. Let me show you here with me if with this piece. It's probably going to be about like this, right? So I'll have some some stringing up here and stringing up here. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm looking at for that. And so as always with these Creative Kate sessions, um, I haven't prepped much. I thought about it a little bit this morning and um, so I, uh, I jumped in and kind of grabbed, um, some items. So I started, I'm, I'm going to start with stringing, um, this side of the piece here today, and then we'll go to this side later. Um, but this, so what I did was I'm going to string some of these big, these are those large brown serpentine rounds or whatever. 
Um, and they have a big, um, a big hole. So I thought big hole bead for me equals leather. Okay. So I grabbed some, um, of, I think this is distressed mahogany, one millimeter. Okay. And then I, um, macrame and you can see I did the macrame here with waxed linen because I thought, you know, we've been talking about macrame and stuff. And I thought, oh, what the heck, I'm going to do a little macrame piece with wax linen. So what I did was I cut, uh, let me tell you how much I cut here, because uh, you're going to want to know. Our, our leather comes in four yard lengths, so I cut, uh, it's almost two yards. It's about 60 inches of the one millimeter. Okay, and in the center, or in the center-ish, um, I did that little bit of macrame because I, I think what I want to do, and let me get in a little tighter so you guys can see it. See, there's this little space right here. So this is where I'm going to uh, connect. So I'm going to put my little piece here that I macrame, and I'm going to bring it right up. I had, there we go, for some reason I had a little glitch there with the camera, sorry about that. Um, but I have, so you can see here how it comes around, it's a little too close, let me get down there. And it's gonna just kind of sit there like that, right? And so what I also did was I, um, I glued this with the GS Hypo cement right here. And I glued it. I did this when I got in this morning. So normally I would wait maybe 24 hours, right? Little pieces because they're bugging me a little bit. So I'm just going to get rid of it and I'm going to just cut it here and cut it here. And the wax linen is nice and sticky. So this will hold. And as I tied my last few knots here, you guys, I added my glue and then macrame over the glue okay so that's all closed up and ready to go okay so now let me turn this over and you can see let me show you the back of this piece though real quick um you can see remember when i did that um going around the um through the I Ching coin um, I just put some of those little seed beads in the back, and this is glued. This is, or as we like to say in the metalsmithing world, chemically bonded here with the zap glue, and that's not going there. That's not going uh, anywhere, okay? So uh, let me show you how I'm going to put this right here. Let me zoom out just a little bit here so you guys can see it. And there's a little space here that I think will be perfect. For that okay so when it lays out beads are going to come from this side all right going from there and then I'll string my other strands from over here so I need a bead to kind of bring everything together I think or if I hadn't have cut these pieces away I could have continued to macrame it but I have um, I don't know if that will fit. I don't know if that pearl even works. Um, but I do have, let me see if I can make it happen. It might, let me see. Um, this is again, the one millimeter leather, okay, in distressed mahogany. And it's pretty thin, you know, the leather, depending on when it's made and all of those things, the diameter of the leather um, varies. A little bit and so this one millimeter actually looks a little thin to me which is a good thing um, I'm gonna see if I can get this shadow regular shadow bead though I could also use one of our big shadows um, since I don't have anyone to holler out to Chris is already busy filling orders I don't want to bug him um, but see look I think I can get it in there see angle cutting if I can get it through if I can get it, get her, let me see, let me get my pliers, maybe that'll help. And if I pull this one, 
kind of down and tight and try and get as much, um, I don't know, room in there. Yep, see, look at, look, if I can get a little bit there. Yep, there we go, and it's through. A little bit of perseverance, right? Also a good lesson for these times. A little bit of perseverance goes a long way. Now it's kind of tight, so you want to make sure as you pull it through that you're not like scraping your leather or anything too much. And this is large enough. It fits, it's gonna be a tight fit, but it's not um, it's not harming my leather as I pull it through. So I'm gonna do that. And But maybe a big shadow might be a better choice for this. But the regular shadow worked. Or any other kind of bead that you have that might, um, you know, that has kind of a big hole that'll fit. So I want to get these, the goal for this is, see how I wanted something tight, and I'll lay it down so you guys can see it. I wanted something tight to kind of hold that together. Now I could have, again, um, you know, silk wrapped it or done whatever it is I wanted to do there, but I wanted, but I wanted something to hold it together and I wanted it to be a bead. So next, um, I want to add, and I'm not sure, I'm going to have to audition some things. So let me, I grabbed these 12 millimeter serpentine donuts. I used them in the, um, I used it over here, you'll remember, in this wrap piece. I used it right here. Well, I'm just going to, um, to uh, try it here. Um, what I could do, maybe, since it's sitting on its side, maybe it would be better to do it like this and to do it like this. Right? Here we go. I was going to put them straight on flat, but this visually might look a little bit better. Let's see what this looks like. Tighten it up. Yeah, I think that's okay. And it kind of mimics this um, I Ching coin, right? So let me uh, see if I can get another shadow on there. Um, so it'll be symmetrical. And then we'll see what we see. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, I do ish, but that's the beauty, I think, of stringing a piece like this is, you know, you don't need to worry too much ahead of time. Like I always say, if you can get, um, let me see if I have one that's a bigger hole. If you have a harmonious palette on your beadboard, then trust that everything will work out. Come on, there we go. And see there, it's peeking through. Use your pliers and say, hey man, come on through. There we go, come on through that bead tunnel. Let me see if I can push it from this side. And again, a big shadow might have been a better choice, but if one fit, I can certainly get another one to fit in there. It's that little end. Come on now. There we go. And that's why I also um, cut, there it went, um, I cut a long um, piece of leather so I can screw around with it, right, and play around and see what, um, you know, what fits, what looks right. So let me just put this into place. Try not to twist your cords. This wants to twist a little bit, right? So we're going to tell it, nah, no twisting, please. Okay, and so there's, there's that. Let me lay it out so you guys can see it. Okay, so, uh, there it is. Oh my God, my mom. <laughs> Someday I'll just, I'll just go on and maybe my mom and I'll do a, 
a joint broadcast where we just tell the wacky stories of the trouble we get into when we're in her craft room. Um, my mom just said, those of you who aren't on the YouTube feed, the process is reminiscent of making that Reba doll. And yes, we did make a Reba McIntyre doll. And yes, it did involve a beer bottle. And that's all I'm going to say. That's it. That's all of the story you get right now. Um, so let's see what's next. Um, I know I want to use these guys, these big serpentine um, pieces, um, but I also grabbed one of, this one's called wood carving, and you can you see the difference? It's similar, right, um, in that it's also the brown serpentine, but it's a carved piece. So maybe I want to make this um, maybe a little fancier. Let's see if I can get the two through here, though. That is something I didn't check. Your thread, as you use it, sometimes becomes a little spongy. I don't think this one's going to work. This side is big, but the second side isn't, so it may not. But it also, it may, if I, if I do my bead whisperer kind of thing. Maybe if I go in on the other side. But see, they get a little spongy, so let me, um, you know what I'm going to do. You know what I'm going to do. You you do know, you just don't know that you do, right? Um, is that uh, I'm going to use a little bit of zap, and I'm going to make some needle ends on this. And let me see if I can stiffen them up to get them through. Maybe. And you've seen me do this with thread, but I don't know. Why can't we do this with leather? So I'm going to pull that through, squeegee that through get the other end, do the same thing. I don't know, maybe it's about an inch here. Squeegee that through. Hopefully I haven't glued it to the bag. There we go. Get a little bit of that extra off of there. There we go. Let those dry for just a second. That's why I love the zap, because it's so fast, right? Fast, fast, fast. Right? Were we, was that a mickle of, uh, yeah, we have several um, beer bottle um, crafts that we've done in the past. It's a, it, it's a torrid story, but uh, one that we will, uh, will tell someday. It'll give you guys something to look forward to. <laughs> it's so true. And it always happens when we're going to clean the craft room and, uh, or as my mom now calls it, her studio, because she's retired. And uh, yeah, it is good times. Um, okay, so I'm going to cut a real um, deep angle. I'm going to use my wire cutters for this. So the zap is set up, and we're going to just cut a real deep angle there. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side here. Sorry, it was a lot of frames. Sorry about that. I see Michelle just jumped on over on the Facebook feed. Michelle, I was already extolling your virtues this morning about that beautiful piece you posted on the bead table. It was really gorgeous. Nope, this one won't fit. So, sorry, wood carving. You're not going to make the cut. I'll try it once more. I mean, I could just go one through and then put the other one through the other way. I'll give it one more college try, but I don't think so. Sometimes when you get semi-precious beads, can you see on this side the hole is real big, and on this side it's just small, right? So it's just, it's just how these handmade beads are sometimes. Let me see. Yeah. Nope. It's not going to do it. So we move on. Moving on. And let's just use, uh, let's see what one of the big serpentine rounds looks like. Now th these have a big old hole, right? So that's why I used a double piece of leather. And see how, and I was afraid of that. See that hole, how that just covers up that, right? So that's, that's not going to work so much because I don't want to cover up that shadow, right? So I need something 
And that something might be, just bear with me here, it might be a knot. So I'm going to go through once, just an overhand knot like this. Instead of doing once, I'm going to go through twice to make it fatter. And let's just see what a knot looks like. Okay, bring it down. Bring it down. And you're just, it would be the same as if you were tying with one. Yeah, that doesn't look so bad, right? And this is, you could ream this out, it's called wood carving, but it's actually serpentine. So if I got out my Dremel and my diamond drill bit and I did it under water and I did all of that, I could um, open it up, right? But meh. We don't have that kind of time in our lives right now. So we're gonna we're gonna keep going. So now see, here's my knot. The knot is larger. I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, there we go. And so I'm gonna add another knot to the other side. Okay? So I'm gonna go around once. It's a good thing I've got a lot of thread here. Around once, around twice. So I've done a double overhand, and as I walk it down, see how the knot wants to cross like this? That's exactly what you want, okay? And you're just going to kind of walk it down so the two kind of pieces of the knot meet. And it takes a little, I don't know, a little bit of practice, but just coax that knot. Don't go too quickly. Coax each little thread as you tie it. My first one came out a lot better than my second one. And I'll tell you why it did. So I'm gonna un I'm gonna unknot this so you guys can see what my issue was. Okay. Unknot here, please. Thank y'all. Now <clears throat> And a single overhand actually might work. Let me try that and see how big it makes the knot because it might look okay and that this one will just be the fancy one close to the front. So you want to keep your threads flat. See that as I bring it around and through. If you twist your threads, that's when things go sideways. Yeah, there we go. I think that single knot will be just fine. And then I can kind of pull my threads a little tight. You want it to be visually tight, but not so tight that, um, that this bead doesn't have any movement. Now I want to try something. This may be wrong. It may not look right at all. Um, but it might. I'm wondering if I want to repeat this donut. I only have a couple in on my table, so because I only grabbed two. But whoops, sorry, I'm a little out of frame. Let me see. I'm going to get it a little wider so you guys can see the whole thing. I don't know. I, I, mm, nah. I'm going to say no to that. Because right, I want this to be lush. I want it to be big over here. Because I'm going to do multiple strands over here. The other thing I want to try is um, just putting on a few of these singles on here, and I just wanted to see how this might look as something in between. My feeling is maybe no, but maybe yes. I don't know, hard to say. And this guy. I mean, I'm gonna use these on the other side, so I might not wanna dilute this line. I might just want to so there's those two. Now again, right, I don't want a lot of space. I don't want space 
there. So let me just put on another one of these and stop stop screwing around with it. Let's see if that knot's big enough. Yeah, and it is. And I just like simplicity, right? Because there is a lot of business going on here and there's going to be a lot of business going on over here. So I need something simple here. And I think this overhand with the two, again, around and through um, is right. And sometimes, you guys, the most simple solution is the correct one. So I'm going to pull on that one a little bit, pull on that one a little bit, and do this. Okay, so I'm going to do this a little more at Kate speed, right? <clears throat> and just slide these bad boys on. Yeah, this is better, I think. And then as I taper down to the clasp, I'll put this one on the other end. So it tapers going down here and I'll taper there. So let me put, I don't know, for mine, I might have to put on like seven. I don't know, we'll see. I'll check it at six. So here's this one. So again, remember the trick is get your bead on there. And then your cords need to be flat, right? Flat as you bring it around your hand. See how they're flat all the way? Put them through the loop. Also still trying to keep them flat, right? Still trying to keep them flat like this. And then as I just kind of pinch it there and pull it into place. Again, visual tightness, it doesn't have to literally be so tight that there's no room. This necklace has to have some movement to it. So don't worry about ratcheting it down too tightly. Okay, let's get another one. String it on. We also have these in a smaller, this is the large size that I've used, but I thought, you know what, if this is going to be a say something kind of I don't know, shield of protection kind of necklace or whatever, you know, screw it. I'm going to make it big and bold, right? So we've got this going on here. That's two, four, five. Let me put on six. And I've still got plenty of thread, plenty, plenty. This was 60 inches that I cut, right? So uh, let me get one of these. I just love these. These are serpentine beads from um, our Vintage Finds collection. And when I go and I find our Vintage Finds, they're literally in this warehouse. And when I found these, I had to climb, I climbed up this kind of crazy platform in the back of the warehouse. I, I had to pick my way through like these old crumbling boxes and I found these in a box and I'm like and these are what I want so I went through a little bit of peril you guys to get these for you but I would do it again uh, they're really uh, they're really stunning they're old they're um, old relatively old probably 30 ish years or so um, maybe even a little bit more, but really nice, clean, um, round serpentine with really nice holes that are finished nicely and stuff. They're hard to find. So I was really stoked when I grabbed them. I was like, yes, this is the bead for me. That one's kind of big. You know what I'm going to do? I know it's sacrilege, but I want this one. So I'm just going to, from that wire I did earlier. I'm just going to cut this up. Cut it. There we go. And use this one. That's the one I wanted. And don't be afraid to cut things up. Who cares? You can always rewire wrap something else. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to hold this up <clears throat> to me. Let me put it on the front view so you guys can see here. And so this is kind of how I measure, right? So if I want this to lay about right here, let me get let me get my, let me get this scarf off here. Hang on a second, because I have to be fancy. All right, there we go. Um, and if my necklace is going here and I want it to lay about right here, 
and the middle of my neck, if I'm bringing it back to the middle of my neck, it's about right here. So I've got about this much left. So maybe like two more beads. Yeah, two more and then the closure. Okay, and that's that's how I measure. Okay, so let's get back. Let me get my scarf off the floor because I threw it on the floor. I'm going to put it back on because I want to be get back to being fancy. So hang on, let me put that on. There we go. If, you know, dress anything up. If you're in your pajamas, you want to feel better, go put on a kicky scarf. That's what I always, my advice is, right? These are a little bit larger than the others that I was working with, but, um, but that's okay. You know what, this one, I'm not gonna use this one either, and it's smaller. I know, sacrilege, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cut it, yep, yes I am. Oh, yes I am, there we go. That's the one I want. I can always rewrap that later. I'm not, I'm not wedded to it. Here, like this. and this and tighten it down there we go okay yeah a kicky scarf jan and jan that's exactly that's what i i call it you know janice says see how i know janice i know the length just trust just trust me on this one just go with me because i think i think this is right I think it's going to sit okay. So now what I'm going to do is let's try and finish um, adding, because I started it here with this, I'm going to um, put this guy, let's see if I can get these two, I might have to trim them again, but I want to finish it as I began it, right? And these are super spongy, so it's time to give it another clean cut, like so. And let's see if I can get it through. Okay, like that. And we're gonna, we're gonna get with the determination. Oh, what did I use? I used my my bent chain nose to help me push it through. There we go. So this one goes on. <clears throat> I'm going to slide on our little friend, our donut. Like so. And then we're gonna close it up with another one. And then I'm gonna leave it, right? I'm not gonna put a clasp on. I'm not gonna do anything because I need to string the other side. Because again, I'm not quite, I have an idea about how long I want this to be, but I can't close one side without having the other side to compare it to, right? So this side will just uh, ruminate, germinate, simmer, whatever. Let's get that one in there. Let's get this one in there. Again, it's that diagonal cut that will really help you get beads that have a smaller hole, a slightly smaller hole. There it comes. And plus, I don't know um, I don't know what kind of clasp I want to even put on this yet, right? So I have a little bit of leeway. Like on the end, if I needed to make this a little bit longer, let me turn it around here so it's in view. So if I needed to make it a little bit longer, let me widen this up. I could add another one of these to the back, right, to do it, 
to do it, you know, to make it right. But this, so that side, I think for now, c'est fini, done, okay? So on this side, I'm gonna start this. Um, I've got a busy day, but I've got a few more minutes here that I wanna share with you because I'm on a roll, I think, um, to attach. So over here, it, what I finished this after we were off camera last week. And so what this is essentially is wire that I wrapped around, right? I, I was continuing to wrap this. So let me show you what I did. Let me get in tight so you can see it because I don't think I actually explained this to you. Uh, so let me show you how I finished this. So I continued with those A dots, right? And I wrapped and I wrapped and I wrapped and I wrapped, right? Wrap, wrap, wrap. As I wrapped and I came to this E chain coin, I pushed it close. I put some beads on the front, the plant, the 11 knots on the back, wrapped through. I repeated it again, but can you see here how I offset the shadow? So this shadow is over here, this shadow is up here, and there's little, you know, instead of one cube there, there's two. So it kind of fits nicely. So there's not a, a you know, a space in between there. Then I just continued that wrap, 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 wrap. Then here at the end, and stopped here, okay? Then here at the end, there was kind of that unsightly piece of wire that wasn't working, and I thought, well, maybe I'll cut it off, but I'm like, no, it needs to be finished. I need to do something like that, I don't know. So uh, what I did was I just glued a shadow on the end with zap. That's it. So, and I thought it really finished it off. There you go, you can really see it there. I thought it really finished it off well. So that's what I did. I just put some zap on the inside, pushed that shadow bead on there, put it down on a baggie, and that's it. That's, that's all there is to it, okay? So now on this side, I'm gonna start with three strands, though I may, I already know I probably want five, right? So, okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use wax linen to string because I've used wax linen throughout this piece. Wax linen is old school. It's kind of a comforting material for me to use because it reminds me of the days at the bead shop and all of that, right? We all need comfort right now, okay? So I am going to cut uh, a little more than a yard. Let me measure this. I also threw my tape measure on the floor. Hang on, let me grab it. I'll tell you exactly how much. And yeah, so all of this, you guys, all of these um, Kate's connections, they are on a playlist on our YouTube channel. So just look, it, they're there. And it's, I don't know, maybe the third playlist down or something, but you'll see. And they're all in order of, um, of the dates. So they're there, they're all there. So I'm gonna measure out a yard and then I'm gonna double that yard, okay? And I'm gonna do that twice more. So here's one connection, one section, and I'm gonna do it again. So this will actually give me six, um, six strands. Bear with me here, this wax linen. It's the end of the roll. I like to use every little bit. So the end of the roll is giving me a little bit of trouble here. There we go. So here's two. And cut it. And then three. Okay. Oh, and that's good. Tammy's saying she just glued shadows to the ends of her leather macrame on her wrap bracelet. Nice job, Tam. I think I'm going to use every. Look at how. Look, I hardly have any of this left. Let me see if I can use the exact end. I'm going to use every bit of that wax linen. Waste not, want not, right? There we go, perfect. 
Perfect. Look, I had just a little piece left, so I'm going to clip that off. All right, so now <clears throat> I'm going to find the center of all of these here, and I'm going to connect them over here, and I'm going to do something similar to this. So I'm going to start with one. I'm going to get one of these, and I'm just going to string um, a little melange of beads. The ADOT Duracoat Eucalyptus just rock my world as you have been noticing earlier and these also where did they go they're here these um that cube that 1.8 millimeter cube the dark bronze so this is how I would deal with it. And I'm going to kind of do the same thing that I'm doing here. So I'm going to start with something that's kind of small, like this guy. And again, see how that's blunt? What do I have to do? I have to angle cut it. There it is. Oh, and I just saw Emily pop on. Hi, Emily Miller. We miss you. We hope everything's going well with you. I can't wait to have you. That one is not a good one, so I'm throwing it away. Can't wait to have you back for a broadcast. So I'm just going to string, I don't know, just some. And maybe I'll try and make them symmetrical. That way I'll know how many. So there's one shadow, one eucalyptus, and two <clears throat> two cubes, one cube there, and one cube there. And let's see how it looks, okay? And again, we really appreciate you guys, all of your likes and your shares and all of this, um, all of that. We really, really appreciate it. Um, for this project, Drea has gone in and kind of updated the blog post, so it's super easy to navigate. The color of wax linen I'm using, this is our walnut color, right? Uh, the four-ply walnut, but you use whatever you like. So here we go. So see how that looks. It's a little, I think I need one less cube. See that there? You can't see. So let me get in tighter. Okay, like so. That looks about right. So I need to do this twice more. And then this is where I'm, I'm going to stop because I'm going to have to, on the back, I want this wax linen to be covered as well. So I'll either cover it, I'll probably cover it with these cubes on the back and I probably need, I don't know, six maybe. Let me just do this one so it's finished and then um, I'll repeat the other ones um, later and then we will uh, string the other side. So here I'm going to do my angle cut. Okay. And we're going to put on this guy. This wax linen feels a little thick right there. So I'm going to cut past that thickness. There we go. That should work. There we are. And I don't know, let's try six-ish, maybe seven. I don't know. One, two, three. You got to keep drawing that wax down to the tip. Kind of a pain, but there we go. Angle cut it if it gets spongy. Let's see, so that's three. <clears throat> Let me put one blue one in the center just to make it, again, kicky. And then three more of these, and let's see what that looks like. One, two, and three. Okay, so the back, yeah, no, that part of the linen that I cut away, it was actually, it was a little on the bulky side. And whoops, I had this one on already. 
from the back, so from the front that I didn't need to use. So let me pull this down <clears throat> and see if it's too long. And it actually was too long. Let me push these down a little bit so they're tight. Yeah, I think I think it's that blue one that I put on is was not the best idea. So I'll take it off. I'll replace it with one of these, and then I'll move everything, you guys, so you can see the whole the whole shebang. Okay. Just bear with me here for just a moment, like so. I want to make sure it's all nice. Let me clear this path just a little bit and see. So I know that that's where my front is. That's where my back is. I tighten everything up. That looks right. So I'm going to have to repeat that three more times. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to, oh, it actually, see there's a little bit of space right there. It needs just one. You really, it's like a couture gown, right? You really, you have to check it and recheck it. Or maybe here, there was one on there. Maybe it just didn't go all the way down. Let me just show you here. Okay, no, it was right. It was just not pushed all the way down. So two, four, I've got five on the back. And then this on the front, one cube, one blue, one shadow, one blue, one cube. And so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to tie it right here just to um, just to call it, right? I can cover it with something else or whatever, but I need to secure it somehow. So it's that same overhand knot and down and tie the knot and call it a day. So I need to, let me lay this out so you can see where we're at. Where are you at? Uh, let me make this a little wider. Okay, so now my task is to get those other strands that I have cut, those other two three yard strands, and I'm going to do that same thing, right? I'm going to put it through right there and put another one through right there. And what I think I'm going to do because I don't, let me get a little tighter in here so you can see it as I look at it, okay? And if this is the center one, right? I'm gonna get in a little tighter. So this center one right here mimics the two that I've got down here. If I repeated this heaviness on this side and this side, visually it might be a little too much, right? Because I want, I still want the beauty of the I Ching coin to show. So I think what I'll do is on the front and on the back, I'm just gonna do a line of the cubes and a line of the cubes and that's it, all right? Then it'll all be set up and ready for me to string, okay? So that's uh, where we're gonna leave it for the moment. Um, I'll get back to finishing this. We'll finish this. I'm going to get you a nice view of this guy here so you can see the full thing. Um, and uh, next week I'm going to show you how to do the closure on this one. Over here we'll close that up and we will string up the second side of this one. There's a good question, my concern about the coin cutting the linen, not in the least. This wax linen is a four ply, which is heavy. And let me show you, I know I have a piece, I, I probably threw it, but here, the linen is here. 
The wax linen is a pretty thick and heavy thread. Linen is really durable. And if you unfurl it, you can see that you can unfurl it and it goes into the plies here. So it's a really, I have strung with wax, wax linen forever. Um, it And it's really um, sturdy. So even if I just wrap the wax linen around this piece and didn't cover it with beads, I think it would be fine. Okay. And yes, thank you, Tam. I will take a photo for Drea. Um, I'll, I'll mock it up right when I get off the line. But I wanted you guys to see how this is going to sit. And that's going to sit there like that. Let me get it maybe as wide. That's probably as wide as I can do it. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. So we'll finish that up next week. And this strand, this is going to be multiple strands. And you guys have seen this one before if you've been watching earlier. It's based, it's um, my, my inspiration is this piece that I strung so many years ago um, with this bead by my buddy Jim Smersich and some of the lamp work beads that I did here. So this side that's coming from the coin is going to kind of look like this. And I have one, two, three. This is four here. So this is going to be six. So it's going to be a little more lush with that. And I'll show you how I do stringing this way, this kind of random, um, and you can see they're all monochromatic, these black beads here. I'm going to do a little bit of a mix. I am um, just in love with the way that this strings up. Janice, you're going to love to see that our buddy Terry, who used to work with us at Bead Shop Brick and Mortar, she just jumped on to the Facebook feed. Um, a big hello to you, my dear Terry, who is uh, so talented in so many ways. I love seeing your little face jump on there, so it's good to see you. I love it when old and new friends jump on the feed to say hello. It's great. It makes us feel like we are together, which is good. So, uh, so that's where I'm going to leave this for now. I think this was a pretty good choice. Um, just kind of having a simple bunch of strands on this one and you know so it doesn't fight too much here on this side over here I'm gonna think about it but it'll probably be some monochrome it'll probably be this which are those uh, the Padres in the the blue um, either the water or the new blue gray some of these my favorite beads of all the the shadow I might put some a dots here um, I'm going to need like a larger bead of some kind to give it a little bit of heft, but I'm not sure what that is going to be yet. It might be a semi-precious, it might be the smaller version of this, um, I, I don't know, maybe some of these guys here to pull those, um, those rondelles, um, the adventuring rondelles up into the piece and of course these guys here this slice of life i think also so it mirrors um all of this over here on this side so it's going to be kind of a melange if you will um of all of this stuff and some of the cubes too i'll probably put um some of those cubes and i had the cubes sitting here a second ago um, these guys right there. So I think that's that's what's going to happen. I don't know though. It needs to uh, ruminate, needs to simmer, so I can see what's going to happen with it. But that's where we are so far with this piece. And yeah, and Julie, that's exactly right. You are saying there you could do the same technique using smaller elements uh, to scale it down. You bet. You do you. For sure, um, you know, make a, a a big grand statement and or just a smaller grand statement, whatever works for you. So um, tomorrow is Friday. We'll have made it through the end of the week, and I have a new knot for you. We're gonna make an earring out of it, and I think I've practiced enough. You're gonna have to bear with me, but I think you're gonna dig it. Um, you could also, I don't know, it has a lot of uses. You could use it as a centerpiece, all of that stuff. But tomorrow, 
we're going to do a special little Friday nodding edition um, of Kate's Creative Connection. So it'll give you something to practice over the weekend. All right, you guys. Well, that's it for Thursday, April 2nd. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, you guys, we want to say here from the bottom of our little beady hearts here at beadshop.com, we could not do this without you. We so appreciate your support and your shares and, you know, everything that you are doing to help keep our small business afloat. Everyone here is fine. Everyone here is good. Um, and we are, uh, we're moving right along. So go to beadshop.com for all of the information on what we did right here. Go to the blog. Drea is updating the blog on this and it's really, um, she's organized it so it's really easy to read. Um, sign up for our newsletter for all of the latest stuff that's happening. We've got stuff working in the background, you guys, you know, just because this, this pandemic isn't going to stop us from doing fun things. So make sure and check your, um, your newsletter. And again, I will see you at same time tomorrow, 8.30 a.m. Pacific time with my coffee in hand. Stay positive, stay safe, everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow for a special nodding edition with Kate's Creative Connections. Talk to you tomorrow, you guys. Bye-bye.